Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Austin FC season. That's right, everybody. It is almost that time of year again where the MLS is underway. So, something I didn't really do last year for the MLS, but did for Green Bay, for the Packers and the NFL, did for kind of a little bit something similar to the English Premier League. We're going over for a season preview of Austin FC in year two this time. So, kind of just a couple of things that I want to touch on. Community and fan expectations of kind of what the fans want to see and are hoping to see this year. Two, a couple of personnel changes within Austin FC. Uh, new signings, people that we let go, people that we cut, people that got taken from us. You know, all that kind of stuff we'll talk about in the second section. The third section, we're going to be talking about schedule standouts. So things that I see while looking at our schedule that stand out and say, huh, keep an eye on that thing. Let's see what that is. And then the last thing that we're going to touch on is something kind of personal. It is games that I'm going to be going to uh, moving forward into this uh, this upcoming season. Thankfully, there's a lot more games uh, that I'm going to be going to now uh, than there were last year. So there will be some more vlogs and stuff like that on this channel. So if you are new and you are interested in that, in addition to the watch alongs that we were doing last season, go down below, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified whenever those things go live. And if you like content, hit that like button while you're down there. So starting off, community and fan expectations. So I am now a member of Los Verdes, as you see by the scarf and some of the other stuff in the background. On the Slack channel that we're all a part of, if you're a Los Verdes member, you get access to a fan uh, Slack channel. So kind of just like a general kind of message board if you don't really know what Slack is. It's just a place where all Austin FC and just anybody can kind of come together and have a discussion on whatever topic you want it to be. So I posted in there a couple weeks ago, actually quite a while now. I've been preparing this video for a while, but I wanted to keep it until closer to the season before I really start uh, going on in it. So as you see next to me, we have the AFC, the Austin FC community thoughts. What does success mean? What is failure? And how many people that commented? I want to give a shout out to those people that did let me know what their thoughts were. So starting off, kind of one of the most broad uh, things that I saw was we have to finish above the other Texas team, above Houston and above Dallas. In addition, that can't be the bottom four teams. That pretty much has to be, we have to finish above those two teams in addition to above 10th place, which I think is pretty easy to do for Austin this year. I think with, with the personnel signings, uh, personnel changes all together, in addition to the new vibe that Austin FC has, I think that's something that can easily be done. Moving down, fighting for a playoff spot on decision day and or making the playoffs. I had to split that into two because there were a lot of people that had two different things. Uh, each of those had a good number of people. So I thought, you know what, we'll split it into two because I don't think that the people that are, you know, I don't think those two things are exclusive. I think that, you know, if we're fighting for a playoff spot on decision day, make the playoffs cool. If we lose out on playoffs by a point, personally, I don't think that's really much of a difference. I mean, it's, it's going to suck to lose out on playoffs by a point, but at the end of the day, that is significantly better than what we finished up last season. So I'd be okay with that sort of improvement. Winning Compateos, again, kind of goes hand in hand with that first place, uh, first slot that is finishing above the other Texas teams. Um, winning record, which I think is big, um, by Ben and Corbin were the two people that suggested that. Corbin then also went on to say cheaper beer at Q2, which I personally don't know anything about. I still haven't been to a home game at Q2. I've been to Q2. Uh, I just haven't been to a home game at Q2, which hopefully... Maybe this year I'll be able to do if some things line up right, um, possibly. But anyway, we move forward from there. Scott says Wolf out. And I think I'm kind of on board with that. But I think uh, I think there's a couple things that have to fall into place for me to be completely Wolf out. Averaging one point on the road, I think, is huge. I think we do need to average a lot of more points than we have been on the road. I think that's something that we really need to be, need to be doing. Having a plus five goal differential, that's insane in the MLS. But, you know, cool, fair enough. Fire, and then a lot of just kind of other uh, um, 
kind of in Q2 stuff and cheaper beer, fireworks on the pitch, new songs, bands, all, no colors in, in the sound in the supporter section. I don't know why I said sound did. Should be supporter section. Uh, stuff like that. And then top half in goal differential. I think that is kind of the key. I think that's more important than having a specific number of goal differential. So that's kind of what the uh, community thinks. Finally, Logan did say anything under 35 points, he would consider a failure. And taking a look at where uh, that minus 35 points would uh, would put, put us, that would put us effectively four points higher than we finished last year, would put us in 11th place. I, I mean, it, it's basically anything can't realistically be worse than this year, is what that is, that is pretty much saying. But now going into kind of the next section, which is the new, is, is the players, the personnel changes. New players, expansion draft, number five pick, somehow Kip Keller, the center back that has the height and the speed that we really need, was left sitting for us. Thanks, MLS. Don't know how that happened, but we picked him up fifth. In addition to later rounds, we picked up a couple fullbacks uh, and a couple midfield players uh, as well, but no, none of them kind of with that same personally with the same impact that I think Kip Keller and Carlos Asensio uh, had the first two picks for Austin. In addition to that, we've signed Max Ruti for another striker. Now we have two on the roster, three, maybe four later on um, with some of the other people that are coming back from injury and stuff like that. He's played in every single Texas team in addition to Houston most recently. So that's good. Gets a little input on kind of what their coaching stuff is like. And then the question with that is, will he replace Musa? Personally, I think first game of the year, hopefully not. I think Musa Jetty, I kind of want him to be um, in that uh, in that role to start the year. And then maybe moving forward, we switch into a, a two striker formation or give both of them, you know, switch them out game by game, depending on what's going on, depending on the opposition defense and all that kind of stuff. Then Ethan Finley, another midfielder and winger that we picked up. Is he going to replace CeCe? I don't think so right away. I'd be perfectly okay if CC continues doing his kind of Oscar worthy nomination, Oscar nomination worthy performances on the field. I would be perfectly fine with Ethan Finley coming in and replacing him. Uh, but if CC kind of gets that more into line and isn't doing that same kind of stuff, albeit CC, go out and play, do your thing on the wing. Perfectly fine. I think Ethan Finley is mostly going to be used as a second half substitute uh, moving into this this year. Johan Valencia is also the one of the big name signings that Austin's had very recently. A couple of days ago, he actually arrived in Austin. There was a huge number of people that were there waiting for him and bringing him kind of that homey feel that, that a lot of Austin FC fans find with the club. Uh, and he's another defensive midfielder, and he's going to bring in that middle slot uh, with with Ring and Danny and all that kind of stuff and, and kind of sure up the midfield for us this year. Danny Hosens, not the Danny that I was just talking about, Danny Hosens is coming back from injuries. I don't think he's played so far in preseason, but apparently from my sources in Austin, he is training and he is kind of active with the club. So two big players that we lost. Thomas Pochettino. Bye. Uh, get your shit together and come back, I guess, maybe. We'll see how you do this year uh, in... Argentina, I believe uh, he went to, yeah, I went to River Plate. Uh, good riddance, honestly. Uh, he didn't perform very, I liked him at the beginning of the year. I think as a, as an individual, I like him as an individual, as a player on this team. Nah, I'm good. Uh, and then the other kind of biggest name is McKenzie Gaines going to Charlotte FC with their first pack, first pick in the draft. Uh, it's sad to see him go. The question that I've had over the last couple of days, is it really sad to see him go because he's a homegrown player or because he's a quality player on the field. He definitely has had an impact with the team, uh, whether that is necessarily uh, a big impact. I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see until this season, but it's definitely kind of a, a personal blow that Charlotte uh, dealt us by tanking, taking one of our homegrown talents and somebody that was uh, big in the community and stuff like that. So um, <laughs> really with what's coming out on Charlotte recently, uh, that club looks to be in the mud pretty bad. O sea, yo esperemos un poco a ver cómo acaba el roster. Y cuando acabemos el roster, me vuelves a hacer la misma pregunta y te digo, pues mira, ahora la verdad, 
lo veo un poquito más cerca. Ahora estamos jodidos. Uh, and then new contracts, Alexander Ring has signed a 2 plus 2, so 2 year guaranteed plus 2 optional years, uh, and he's elevated to that third designated player slot that Pochettino vacated with his loan slash. It's, it's technically a loan now, but I'm pretty sure it's a loan with an obligation to buy at the end of the loan period, so it looks like Pochettino is gone permanently, but not officially just yet. So Ring picks up that third DP slot. I'm perfectly okay with, with Pochettino coming back not in that designated player spot, but just as a regular paid player, uh, be fine with that. I think he was just how he was on paper and then in addition to how he played on the field didn't add up. They weren't level. You know, if he if he didn't play that well, but he was just a player, fine, whatever. But with that elevated DP uh, signet, uh, it's a little bit of an issue. The other thing that I've seen recently that I'm not sure if a lot of fans like is Jared Stroud getting a, getting a new tr contract with Austin. Um, Jared Stroud was one of those players last year that was kind of hit or miss. He stepped up, had some big plays in uh, in some games of the season, and then in some games like the game that I went to in Portland, uh, I was sitting right in front of him in the first half, and I don't think I saw him once. He was just there, like he was making some over runs. He was making relatively good runs, but at the end, he was just kind of invisible. There wasn't really much uh, to see there. So. One thing that I also want to do that I'll put up next to me uh, slowly, kind of as I go through each section, it is my kind of preference and who I'd like to see in the starting 11 for that first game of the year uh, in a couple of days from when this video is uploaded. So obviously in goal, I'll be building this along with you guys uh, here. So let's see. I think the, uh, the first guy that we need to have who has gotten a number upgrade, which I think is big, is the big man himself, Stuver. Brad Stuver in net. Don't think there's really any questions there. Uh, I, I think Stuver is definitely the uh, the guy. So my go-to back line for Austin is Komanach, Keller, Romagna, and Lima. I know Keller is a very kind of suspect player as of right now as he's still very young, just coming out of the draft, but I do think that he has the speed and, and the style that we need in the back especially the speed. We got caught out so many times with both Komenach and Lima or Lima and Jimenez or kind of our variating uh, back line fullbacks uh, pushing forward up the field. I think that Keller has that speed to kind of track back and uh, kind of cover that, that open area that we left quite a bit last season. So I think Keller's in there. Romagna, I started the year despising Romagna. I, don't th I did not think he was a good center back. I thought he was somebody that would need to be replaced immediately however as the season kind of moved on and, and moved forward into the second half i was like you know what romania it, it took a little bit of time for him uh to, to kind of step up to where he should be but i actually really like romania as a starting center back for austin and this is where i think it becomes the second part that where it becomes a little controversial and that is lima over jimenez i think hector Jimenez played very very well this past season uh, however, I think Lima is a better defensive player. I think Jimenez is a better attacking wing back. However, Lima is definitely a better defensive wing back, defensive fullback. And I think that that's kind of something that we need to ingrain into this team is the back line stays back. The back line doesn't need to be to push forward all the time and, and create these open spaces. I think if the back line stays back, or at least the majority of the back line stays back with one of the two uh, DMs that I'll, we'll get to in just a second. I think that's going to be a key for Austin FC moving forward. So in my mind, moving up the pitch a little bit further, that with the defensive midfielder is Valencia and Ring. I think that right now as a start, those are the two best kind of straight defensive kind of box-to-box -box midfielders that we have. Uh, Danny, you could easily throw in there instead of either one of them uh, to do kind of a more holding midfielder role, uh, staying back with Valencia or with Ring. But I think Ring wasn't suited necessarily for that kind of holding role. As you saw at the points where Wolf kind of let him. I say Wolf let him. Wolf didn't do anything to control him. Um, when, when Ring pushed forward, uh, you could definitely help see that he kind of helped that, that attack uh, create something. And I think that with Valencia and Danny in there as well, kind of rotating and stuff with Ring, Ring can kind of push forward and do that box-to-box -box stuff that I think in his head he wants to do. 
So I think Valencia and Ring, you could do Valencia and Ring, you could do Danny and Ring, you could do uh, uh, Danny and Valencia if you really want to. Those, it's a very rotating midfield, and I think we're going to see that uh, if this Valencia Ring pairing that I'm expecting uh, goes haywire in that first game of the year. Next, moving up the field a little bit farther for the attacking midfielders, we have uh, three of them. So we have Cici, uh, Cecilio Dominguez on one side on the left. Driussi in the middle, and Fago on the right. I think that that kind of is the stable attacking midfield core of this team. Uh, I'm expecting significantly more uh, from Dominguez, uh, from CC moving this year, switching entirely from playing in that uh, striker, kind of f fake number nine. He wasn't really a number nine, but moving him out to the wing and letting him play on that side for the majority, if not the entirety of this season. Uh, I, I think he's going to do a lot better there. And then Fagu, I think, is uh, he does what he did this year with, in addition to help with other pe like other people doing more. I think it's going to be an outstanding year. Fagu does very well on the right. He does like to cut inside, which is great. He and Driussi can switch. He and CC can switch. You know, they those three shown in the last half of the year work well together. Uh, and I think that just even with a little bit more time, uh, those front three or attacking three midfielders are. Uh, significantly uh, improved as a unit when they were already pretty good so completing the 11 we've got 10 so far completing the 11 is also another n n jersey change in addition to Driussi going from uh what number was he last year can't remember the top of my head what number it was last year but moving to a number seven and then attacking midfielder role another jersey change which some people weren't super happy about but it is Musa Jete moving from 99 to number two I think Musa Jetty gets, I think he deserves that starting number nine uh, this year. I think he deserves that role. We'll see Maxi in there. We'll see a couple of the other players, Husin maybe. Uh, we'll see a couple of other people rotate in and out in addition to Finley on, on one side or the other uh, throughout the year, um, which I think is going to be big is not only the starting 11, but then also those five subs that, you know, five six seven secondary players that we have and seeing how they can come in and how they can influence the game in the second half you know we're not going to have to rely on these 11 players for the whole year or 12 13 players we got we got 18 players 16 17 18 players that can definitely uh influence the game in some way which i'm super excited for seeing kind of a more full lineup for austin but i think i i personally i would put moose up there i'd say hey you know you're our guy last year go in there start if you don't feel comfortable up there right now, if you want a little bit more time behind or, you know, if the back line's giving you some hassle, we'll throw in somebody else there. You know, make give that attacking core, the, the striker core, uh, something to work with a little bit. But I think this right here is the starting 11 that I personally would like to see game number one. Then if this hits the fan, cool. We got other guys. We can throw Maxi in there. We can throw Romagna back in there. We can throw Danny in there. We can throw Finley in, you know. Like I just said, we have people to change. Um, I, I do really want to see some, if that first game is going south, I want Wolf to change something. I want Wolf to dramatically change something with those players that we have on the bench uh, to fix the problem. If we lose game one, oh, we got problems. We got big problems. So now moving into a couple, the seven kind of standout games plus one stretch that I want to talk about um, that I think is is big. Clearly, obviously, the first one we got to go to is that February 26th matchup against FC Cincinnati. A lot of questions swirling in my head about that. What's the starting lineup going to be? How does Wolf react if it goes south? If we get scored on early, who comes in as tactical subs if the game's still uh, tied? going late into the game or if we're ahead by one goal or behind by one goal you know stuff like that what tactical changes has wolf done uh, and planned to do uh, in these last couple of weeks leading up to the cincinnati game is big just to see kind of a metric of where we are at uh, as a team moving into year number two the next game that's big on my list is up here if you don't know i live in portland it's up here on the 12th of march against the portland timbers that game that i went to has been living right back here for the entire offseason just the disappointment that i felt going to the first game and it's a little personal stuff just you know going to the first game and seeing us like that after i i know that we had the talent and and the players 
to beat this Timbers team and going out there on the road and seeing us just kind of completely fall apart uh, was very sad to me. Um, so I think that there's going to be a lot of uh, kind of focus on that. And can we go out into dangerous territory where we know we can beat the team and then we've shown we can beat the team and how do we react out on their playing field? So they're moving again. Another away game is at San Jose. This is the fifth game of the year. And this is where a lot of fans and a lot of people in this, the um, Los Verdes Slack channel have kind of said, cool, if we don't have anything good at this point, if we're not, six, you know, we don't have, um, you know, we don't have 12, 13, 14 points out of the first five games. Whoa, Wolf, come on. You know, if we don't have anything above 10 points, I think at, at, at after those five games, uh, I think a lot of fans are going to be calling Wolf, he got to go, buddy. Um, I think with the amount of talent that we have brought in recently um, and how we kind of ended the year and how it seemed like we were starting to come together up until, you know, that Portland game, like I just said, I think this is where a lot of the fans call for Wolf. Hey, buddy, nice knowing you. Hit the road. Get out of here. Will I think Wolf get out of here? No, I don't think Wolf is leaving this year. Uh, maybe at the end of the year, but I, I really don't think Wolf will, will leave even if it, it's that decline. I don't see him leaving at the end of the year. The next game on my list is the end of June at Charlotte Battle of the uh, Expansion Teams. They've stolen games. Will he play for them? Uh, if so, how does he play? Is he a substitute? Is he a starter? Uh, <laughs> I mean, on that thread, is any gonna is anybody gonna play for Charlotte right now? Um, they look, from what I've seen, to be the biggest dumpster fire of a team I've ever seen. Uh, they look like a bigger dumpster fire than Wolf's backyard. Uh, <laughs> they, there's some stuff going on in Charlotte that I, I kind of just feel bad for soccer fans in Charlotte with, with this is your team. I, I'm interested to kind of see where they stand in the middle of the summer. So there, um, September or sorry, no July 9th, uh, against Atlanta, uh, huge we have to travel to atlanta for that game uh it's gonna be tough to deal with their forwards the speed that they have with this back line if it hasn't changed um it, i'm worried about that game i i do see us you know if, if we come away with that game with a point i'm happy moving on then to kind of the the second to last game that i have here is at fc dallas on the 24th of july that is the last copa Teos game of the year we still have effectively two and a half more uh, months after that. The last game of the year is in October. This is in July. So we'll know Copa Teos very, very early this year. But this FC Dallas game, uh, I, I think that, Dal that Dallas doesn't have the talent nor Houston to keep up with Austin this year. So I think, I think Austin's got a very good chance of winning Copa Teos and winning that game up in Dallas. Then comes into kind of this, the one stretch that I'm talking about. And that is the August stretch. Looking over here, we have uh, at home against San Jose, at home against Kansas City, we have to go to Min Minnesota, we have at home against LA, and a, at home against Portland from the 6th. So the games are August 6th, the 13th, the 20th, the 26th, and the 31st. So we have five games in, in Austin, or sorry, five games in, in, in August, four games in Austin, where the temperatures, if you if you live in Austin or you've been to Austin, or I'm a, which I'm assuming you are if you're an Austin FC fan, it gets hot. So I'm excited to see kind of what those games, 6 p.m., 6 p.m., 5 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. So they're night games. They're not going to be as hot, but they're still going to be hot. So that's kind of that stretch that I'm worried about kind of seeing fatigue and seeing how our players as a whole uh, unit kind of react to the heat and react to the changing of the uh, of the starting lineup most likely for every game there just to get that heat rotation out because you you know i grew up playing sports at that time in, in austin and it is not fun it's not fun to be out there for any for any real extended period of time but you know they are professional athletes i'm not so they're probably a little bit more used to it than i am but it's still tough it's still draining on the body but then the last game of the year is at home against um the the, the next game is the last game at home against the Colorado Rapids on the 9th of October. Big questions there. How are we closing out the year? Are we closing out the year with a win, a draw, a loss, 
where's the mentality of the team at and then also physically where is the team on the table are we fighting for a playoff spot that is decision di decision day are we fighting for a playoff spot what are we doing where's this team at so i think i think we have a very good chance of of fighting for if not having that eighth spot in the playoffs if not seventh realistically i think kind of high i don't think we can probably finish above fourth for fourth or above uh fifth if he six seven eight nine is kind of where i'm hoping um easily where i think that austin's going to finish in that chunk of those three or four teams but moving on to the very last part of this video is the games that i'm going to be attending and the games that you'll be able to see here on the channel kind of the not obviously not the games but the vlogs of these games uh here on the channel obviously i'm going to be going to the game against portland up here i'm going to be going to the game in vancouver uh in seattle at the end of the year i think those games are both in seattle is september and then in vancouver is the first of october um so we got march september october and then also i might be going to the game in denver i got some family that live in denver it is the fourth of july so might take a family trip out to denver denver and able to go see that game so right now it's looking like four maybe five games that we'll be going to uh if i can find myself in austin on a game day weekend so you know that's kind of where i i'm personally at my lineup for this team my kind of thought process i know this is a little bit longer of a video than we normally have on the channel but i thought it was necessary to kind of put out my thoughts and yeah you know i kind of ramble a little bit but you know it is what it is if you're around for the for the streams you know exactly what you were getting into when you clicked on this video so but if you have enjoyed today's video go down below hit that like button if you're excited for the austin fc uh season if you want to stick around for some of the kind of watch along parties and watch parties that we do for pretty much every single game if i'm available for it i know i'm gonna miss, miss the game against miami i'm going down for my grandfather's birthday um which is the same time in the same day as that game um so there's going to be a couple games here or there that I'm not available for, but pretty much every single game uh, that is broadcast, I will be live for with a watch long. So come on, chat with me. Let's see, uh, you know, let, let's let's talk about Austin FC together. Go down below, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you're notified whenever I upload in addition to go live for that. But that's it for me. Take care. Peace.